long is the raya? This is Re'ah here. It has been some time since I have posted a video on the community. I want you to understand the sustainability of the Hebraic lifestyle if we learn how to truly care for each other. And so what I want to do is give you some kind of an overview of the entire community, some of the things we have been working on. This is Briss, beautiful day here in Jefferson, South Carolina. Uh, Simeon, my cameraman, my Rafael, and I, we are the only ones here, the entire community has gone to Myrtle Beach to enjoy the ocean and for the laborious labor of past tabernacles. And so they're out enjoying everything. I want to take you on somewhat of a thorough tour to show you how you can utilize things as we have here and build homes and buildings that are adequate for one to live in. And then the most important thing is the sustainability that we can sustain a great friendship and love and not only that but also to maintain the physical health of each individual as we grow our own food so come on i want to share with you some of the things that i'm i, I have been doing during the summertime and the community here again it has been some time as our oxymoron kind of uh, give you a span of everything i want to Take us first of all to the raised beds here and show you some of the things that we're growing and then I want to give you an overall view of the community all right I'll show you some of the things that I've worked on look if you look at my home here I live in a small house here let's go this way very small but it's a very beautiful home and the next time I will give you a tour inside but this house cost $1,500. That's all I paid for it. I have everything that you need to sustain. Comfortable. You can see the fire is rolling here. We have fire. It keeps the house warm. It has a shaped roof. What about the roof? And the shakes for the roof? Roof was given to us free. One of the local llama companies here just simply gave us that. So it is a very sustainable lifestyle, simple home, easy uh, to accommodate your necessities, to live, sleep, eat, it can be done. You don't need something that is so massive that it's going to cost you the bulk of your finance just to maintain. It takes nothing to maintain this. So this is my little home that we have added on here over the years. Uh, take advantage of the water. This is a water tank here that when it rains it's full. There's plenty of water in here. We can take advantage of that, utilize that. And uh, that's part of the process. Here in the raised beds, we have, uh, we have carrots. In this part of the country, you can plant garlic up to November. So we have carrots here. We'll show you some of the some of the carrots as we proceed on. We got carrots and everything growing. These are things that we can utilize in the kitchen directly in our dining hall. So we have these things growing: carrots. We have raised beds. This is enough raised beds here. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Around fifteen raised beds with this one here. This is enough, and you see the, the arrangement of this, beautiful, accommodating. You can feed 50 people, 60, every day easily out of this. And it's not a tremendous back-breaking work. You can get out here, you can, you, you can utilize all kinds of things to, uh, to grow food. And you find the old freezers, stand-up freezers, you can Put a false bottom in that, put dirt in that, so you don't have to bend down so far if you're, you're getting older. So these are the kinds of things you can utilize. These are concepts that we have grown to understand during the time that we, we have been here, nearly uh, 20 years it will be. So the whole purpose of this is to sustain friendship, love, kindness, 
and also that we can eat because it takes that. If you don't want to go out and labor just to eat and to pay electricity and things like that. Come on, uh, I want to show you something. This is, this is part of the community here. This is our dining hall. You that have never seen our dining hall, this is where we all come to dine. It's easy to do that way. It's not that expensive. We come to dine in this building here. Now, if you look at other videos, you will see the dining facility, but we're gonna step in just for a moment. We have a place here where about we, we, when we dine, place for cookouts. We can gather in here, it's a beautiful place. Keep the bugs and things out. We come here at times, uh, have great fellowship. We have the plaza. We can enjoy the outdoors. And we certainly do do that because I am a cook. And I love to cook. Beautiful plaza here. And this is our dining facility where we all come to eat. Everyone, we have two meals a day, breakfast in the morning and dinner in the evening. But we all come here and dine. This is where we all come to dine. And as I said, we are the only ones here now, Oximion, my Isho, and myself. But this is where we dine. This is a beautiful place, very clean. We believe in things being clean. And then we have the tables and things where people will come. But we sit here. So it's a very beautiful place, very clean. And this is how we dine. Families, we're one family, so we sit together. You cannot keep a place like this warm or cool if you do not have some kind of improvising. And you have to be able to take advantage of everything because you would work simply to pay the electric bill and it costs. Now, you want to live off the grid, that's fine. But for what we do, we cannot, we need electricity. We need that. Let, let me show you what, how we keep this warm and how we keep this cool. Over the years, Yah has blessed us to understand quite a few things. So we try to take advantage of everything, any kind of simple technology, we try to take advantage of that. Let, let me show you this. These are our homes, and, and of course I want to show you my Sukkot, the cabin that I built during the summer. So th this is the back of my home here. Uh, my Isha and I, simple home that we've added on. Doesn't cost much, few hundred dollars here, few hundred there. It's a very large home here. This is our Zahim Yarabiyah. He's been working on his home for some time. Uh, little house, we paid $3,000, but our Zahim has built all this addition to his home. The siding on this home, it was given to us. We have bartered for things, so it doesn't cost that much money. What we have here, as I said, to keep our dining hall cool during the summertime in the humid weather here, we have what they call swamp coolers. They are utilized in the Midwest and the West where there's low humidity. But we take advantage of this kind of system. It's a process of water flowing through the systems, through filters, to keep the dining hall comfortable when we're dining in there in the evening. Here, we have a 45,000 kW generator that connects the whole community. So when all power is gone, this is a diesel, we are able to have power uh, throughout the whole community. We have power here. We're able to do that. And the person we bought this from 10, 15 years ago, he actually visited us from Florida because this type generator that is a single phase, he had never done one like this before, but he did this for us. What about heat? You cannot heat a building of this size with gas, propane, or electricity. It will cost. So let me show you our heating system here. That supplies hot water for a shower house here. This system here, and also for our laundry room. All of this is in that building that you're looking at. We have a laundry room there. You do your laundry. And so that's what that building is for. It is sustainable. We can sustain if we come together and share with each other. Now this system here, come. This 
This is a nuclear center here. This is a system. That's, this is one of our businesses that the finance for the community, we cut trees. Anything that anyone wants us to do, we do it. And see, this is a system that our Oximion, our cameraman, we built this, he built this system many years ago. We were looking at a system, but it was too expensive. We could not afford that. So he came up with the idea, let's go and find a one of the huge power sources or power boxes at the junkyard. We paid $500 for that. Now this is what it does, it keeps, we pack wood in here. You see all of that wood? You don't have to cut small pieces of wood. So this is what heat the dining hall, this is what supply hot water for the shower house that we have here, and the shower house of this system right here. It is more than adequate, it keeps us warm, in the most severe cold days. And the wood here, the ach, we, uh, we will split this, I will split this, and we will utilize this. Well, these are heavy pieces here. This is, this is pine, but it, it burns well. I, I want to show you a home that, uh, show you how we take an old mobile home uh, and, 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 and make it beautiful, make it sustainable. You can live, you can take care of yourself. We have the mobile homes here. We're not going to walk the entire community today, but we will at other time. You can see the beauty of the mobile homes, but let me show you how we do one. Let me show you. Here's a mobile home. What we have done here, if you can see on the top, we have nice gable roofs on the mobile home. We take the tin, we buy tin, we have traded for tin, we have bartered for tin. That the old farmers, when they tear it down, the turkey houses, we get the tin. A lot of the siding and things like that. So we put nice gable roofs on the homes. The windows in this home here, they were given to us. And so we take out the old windows of the uh, mobile home windows and try to put windows that uh, will make it more attractive. But this is one that we haven't finished, but we're working on it. Come on inside. Let's look at this one. It's a very lovely place. Very lovely mobile home. Doors, all this given to us. So it's just a matter of fixing things up, painting. Once we do that, put a nice wood burning stove in here. The floors are strong. Beautiful view here of the little pond in the back here. And so this is a very nice home to put someone in. We fix them up very, very nice. This is one, no one lives here. We're just getting this fixed, prepared, a little kitchenette, a little area where everyone can put their small refrigerator and a little place where they can prepare a, a certain meal if they want to do that. Also, this home here is large bedroom here. We'll have this finished for Tabernacle next year. And right here is what we call a, this is a compost toilet here. This is a compost. This is a nice system where it composts the waste. It doesn't stink. These are wonderful tools to have, especially if you're living or trying to sustain this kind of lifestyle. These are wonderful to have. Small bathroom, shower. Here it is, a compost toilet. Then you have a nice little view. Look at the nice little view here. Simple. Beautiful, nice deck on the back. You can look out to the La Pond. You can go fishing. You catch fish. You come in your home. You can fry your fish. You can bake it. Whatever you want. But this is what we will do with an old mobile home. We will take it, take advantage of it, and uh, put a nice wood burning stove in here. Everything is here for a nice wood burning stove. And it will keep this place warm. Very warm. This is for a family, husband and wife and a child, or two daughters and two sons. They can live in this quite comfortably solid floors. It's just a matter of us painting wood like this. We get it from the lumber company. They give it to us. They know that we will use the wood, and I'll show you that. So this is, this is what we will do with an old mobile home. You see the walls here? See how beautiful the walls look? This wood that, have, that has been given to us, so we take advantage of it and utilize it. That's what we do. 
So you can sustain this lifestyle if you want to. You can live with each other. And just It's amazing how people say they love each other, but yet they have not the ability to care for each other and to tend to each other. That's not love. You call it what you want to. That's why I tell people all the time, don't love me. I don't want it. I don't want it. We have the husbandry here. We have animals more than enough to feed us uh, and to sustain us. So this is important. This is important to uh, our friendship and our caring for each other to help sustain us. Come on a journey this way with me here. This is the home of our Zakin, as I said, Zakin Yaramiya. We paid only $4,000 for this home. And he has built a nice, beautiful home. Him and his wife, and two daughters, and his son. Beautiful place. I want to show you my suit cup. Come on. Little area like this that my wife, she loves to come and sit during the spring, the summer, the autumn. Bricks here, all of this was just, these were things that were throwaways. And we take advantage of that. We take advantage of everything that is reusable. Her little, or the composition of this community is built on the things that have been thrown away. Let me show you a cabin I built. I built this during the summer. Just a little here, a little there, a few hours here, a day or two here. But I want to show you the result. Now, the fiberglass at the top, we purchased that to do our greenhouses. This is 10 off, off the skirting of this house. It's just 10 off the turkey barns around here that the old farmers tear down. And so this is the result of the labor. This is a beautiful little suit cut here. Beautiful little home. It's the hardwood floors, oak floors. I got the oak for the floors. I traded a man some watermelons uh, for the floors. All these mirrors here, someone gave me these mirrors, so I took advantage of it. All the wood, the siding here in this place, uh, uh, one of the local lumber companies brought it to me because they know we will utilize it. So isn't this a cozy little place? Look at the ceiling and all of that. Just wood that was brought here down. They said, well, do you want it, Reach? Sure, we'll take it. And so I just took my time a little here. I made my own curtain rods and all that. My issue made curtains and all of this. It, it can be done. It's just that the matter that people really don't want to do it. Because we really don't know how to care for each other. We don't know how to do that. So this is my sukkah. I built my bed. My own bed with wood that was thrown away. Llama Company local. The headboard here was given to me some years ago, and I just took advantage of it. That's all you have to do. I, I want to show you a real cabin, though. Follow me. Let me show you a real cabin. Now, when you see this cabin, we only spent five, five hundred dollars for it. It's a beautiful cabin. This is part of our community. It's much larger than what you see, but I want to do a quick video. I want to get to the garden to show you what we have. That that's part of the sustainability that we need to have food. You got to have food to sustain. You must have that. And you can't afford to go out and buy the things in the market. It's best to have a local market where you can purchase things. But to go out and buy everything that you need, green stuff, and meat protein, you're going to spend a lot of money. That's it. This is the garbage dispose, uh, where we dispose of our garbage here. This is a drying house where we can dry all kinds of things during the, during the summer. Just simple. This is just a, just a simple little drying house stove. We got racks in here. We dry all kinds of things in here. And this is one of our storage buildings where we have food to last. This is the storage here. We have food to last. If there's any kind of uh, uh, shortage or any t type situation whereby we need food, we go right here and get it. This is my favorite place where I love to cook. My grills. I love to do a lot of cooking right here. This is an apparatus in the day when we had a larger uh, 
well, we had 135 people here. This is a cannery that we built, Oximion, through design of a French architect and engineer, designed this stove for Sierra Leone because of a uh, because of the energy efficiency of the stove. We took the same design, he refined it. We built this stove where we could can nearly 200 jars at one time. 200 at one time. This was at one time a bakery where we could bake 50 loaves of bread at one time. It's a beautiful place, it's dusty in here now. But these are the things that we use here. We just, we've taken the stove out of here and used it in another area. So we have canneries in here that we come, we can do in the summer. We, we utilize everything. It's a nice little building, and all of this building, it costs us very little to build it. Very little money we have in it. The only thing we have money in is the floors. We like to do things nice to accommodate the daughters. Uh, we have this walk-in freezer here, whereby you know, we can freeze our food, we can put it up, to sustain us. We have this walk-in cooler here to put things fresh out of the garden that they can be sustained and all of that. So that's how we utilize things. Anything that's utilizable, we, we take advantage of this. This is my monster here. I cook on that. You can cook a whole cow if you want to on that. Cook a half a cow at a time. Let me show you some of the homes here, just right here. This is a storage building here. I don't know if it's open, let me see. We store the things that we need. No. And this is what they call the cloth house. Where there was cloth, that was a major uh, fabric company here. They gave us tons of cloth years back. We still have some. That was 10, 15 years ago. This is what we call the potato shed, where we keep potatoes and things like that. These are some of our guest homes. I'll show you those, but let me just show you. It's a very colorful, if you just span that, you see a very colorful, beautiful place we have. I believe in colors, and we love colors. This is a home here that, this home costs, we paid $4,000 for it. The family that lives here, it's a beautiful home inside, it's beautiful. These are some of the other homes that those that still have there. Tents up, tabernacle, it's gone. The Achim that worked, they haven't had time. Uh, you can see the glass throughout the community here. Simple, very clean, that's important, but very sustainable. You want to be able to sustain all things. And this is the home, look at this home here, how beautiful it is. How beautiful this is, a beautiful place. Let me show you this cabin. Different things that we utilize to take advantage of. Very sustainable, very livable. This is a cabin we paid $500 for. This is a beautiful uh, guest quarter that has six bedrooms in it. It's a very beautiful house inside. Very beautiful, very clean. Very accommodating. This is the low cabin that we paid five hundred dollars for. Let me show you inside. We have a root cellar here. I haven't been in here in years. This is a root cellar. This building here. It's a storage up top. It's a very beautiful root cellar that we built years ago. Probably one of the strongest buildings we ever built. This root cellar here. And put root crops or whatever to sustain us. That way, come on to the cabin. A 
As I said, five hundred dollars for the cabin. All of this wood on the walls, it was free, given to us. The local llama company, just, they bring us this, all of this. You see how beautiful this is? Tapestries at the Achutim. Uh, so it's, it's a beautiful place inside. I haven't been in here in so long. Okay, here's a light here. It's sustainable, we have water, we have a small restroom and everything. It has a shower, but it's a cabin, it's a true law cabin. This whole house we got less than a thousand dollars in it. Who couldn't live here? You couldn't live here. Things you may have to tighten up, but it's very, it's a cabin that's worth living in. Beautiful view out front. Beautiful view. You sit here, you watch the deer, all kinds of animals. You ask Grant Bessus with an enormous amount of property here. He has. Okay, let me turn the lights up. We believe in conservation as well. Conserving, that's important. Conservation. Sustainable. Sustainable, sustainable. And so this is part of the accommodation for the community. There's a special project that I'm going to begin. I'll show you that in the next video. But I do want to show you, you see the homes we have. I want to include this in the video. How do we keep the homes warm? That's important to keep your babies warm, your children, to make everything is warm uh, in your homes. That's quite important. But I'll show you what we do, how we make sure the homes are warm and they are taken care of. The opportunity has this little shop and everything out here. These little buildings, he built them, he fixed things up. Uh, it's my first time coming over this way in so long. Well, let me share this with you. Let me show you this. Come on and follow me. It's a beautiful home inside. He's everything manicured inside. Very clean. Well, let, let me let me share this with you. We at one time had 135 people here. And down there, there's about some. I would say 30, 35 maximum, 35. But uh, we're not going anywhere. We enjoy living the way we live. These are two of our guest homes, beautiful inside. Hardwood floors. As I said, the, uh, the uh, lumber company here give us the wood, they bring it. All this wood you see around here has been given to us. This was one of my projects during the summer. This one was one of the first buildings we built here. This is a beautiful home as well right here. Large home here. Beautiful apartment here on the end. Beautiful one here. Very beautiful apartment here. This house is here. We use it for a guest house and people visit. But this was one of my projects this summer as we prepared. This is one of the first buildings we built. And we did not do a quality job, so what we did, I laid the blocks, I'm the block mason, one of them around here. It's going to be a wraparound deck all the way around this place. It's going to be a porch that you can come and sit, the babies can run and have fun. So we've been working on this, and this is a job that we hope to get done before the winter sets in. It's a beautiful building inside, I'm going to build a loft area for my children, my little ones, to run and play and to have little sleepovers and things like that. So that's what we're going to do. It's important to have activity in community to keep us, not foolishness, but activity. We love that. This is one of our greenhouses here. This one here. We'll utilize that 
during the uh, winter, take advantage of that, uh, even when we put the goats in this area, uh, goats or the sheep, they go inside, this, this is one of the greenhouses here, and what you see here is our graveyard, that's where we have buried quite a few, young and old. One of the first playgrounds is somewhat in disrepair, but uh, we'll fix that up. We have a huge one for the children. We do. Okay, this is one of the greenhouses here. We, we put the animals in here to graze, the sheep, the goats. This is the swimming pool here whereby we swim. Men swim one day, the women swim one day, but not collectively. So we enjoy all of this. Uh, listen, we have a basketball court here where we play ball. We used to. I still get out there every now and then and shoot some basketball. This is where we play basketball. We can light it up at night, the huge lights here. We can light up the basketball court. We will play basketball till midnight out here. We had, I don't know, probably 50 men here. This and these are raised beds. We have these three to do. We have sweet potato slips in here, whereby we started our sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes. And, um, and we, we're going to plant garlic in these. Here we have strawberries, an abundance. Strawberries are here in these beds. And by the way, all of this wood for these raised beds it was given to us. It was delivered to us by the truckloads and we still have tons of it left. So you can take advantage of anything that anyone is discarding. Look at this, come on here, travel with me. I need to open the greenhouse up. No one is here but Oximion, my Isha and myself. But look at all the beautiful greens we have here. Look at this. We have some beets here. They didn't do that well, but we have beets. Beautiful beets. We have kale. Boy, that's sweet and beautiful. Look at the kale here. Kale? You see how much greenery is in just here? Can a family of five eat all this? Do you understand what I'm doing? Look at all the garlic here in the bed. Panda, look at all, see all these beds here? This is garlic. Beautiful garlic. Garlic. You can't eat all that. We have a variety of green wheat. I like to grow to make sure there is enough. If we don't eat it, let the animals eat it. We have carrots of different kind. Let me see. Okay, we have carrots. I like to make sure they're ready. White, red. Carrots, beets. We can't eat all the food. We have greens here. We don't eat it all because I love to grow, but we never eat it all. All these greens here. We got lettuce that has bolted. We got lettuce here that's beautiful. Sustainability. Oh, that's delicious. Mm, delicious. Come on. See all these greens here, all these raised beds, all of these, this wood was given to us. We did not have to pay one dime for one piece. All of it given to us, all of it. Look at these beautiful greens here. Look at that. Come on. Greenhouse here, let me show you this. This is our solar greenhouse. 
takes advantage of the winter solstice. But look at this. Let me show you. Look at that. Sweet cherry tomatoes. Where are you going to fight? Come on. Mmm. Ah. Mmm. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Cherry tomatoes. Parrots everywhere. You can't eat all the carrots. Beautiful peppers. Look at that. Mmm, that's hot. Tomatoes, sweet peppers, beautiful tomatoes. You see that? Mmm. Nice. Simple work. It doesn't take much. Come on. Look at all this that we haven't eaten. But I love the fact that it draws it draws life. Bees and things like that. You need that to follow me. Look at the different type kills we have. Mm. Look at that kale. All these is three kinds of kales right here for your palate. Ah, sweet. I'm telling you, sweet. Here's a greenhouse here. There's tomatoes growing in here. See that? Mm. Mm, mm. Peppers. Sweet peppers. Ah. I don't know how hot these, these are hot. I'm not going to do that because... Mm. <laughs> that beautiful mint. Talking about sustainability. This is a very lovely house on the lake here, beautiful home on the farm. You go inside, you will see a very lovely, furnished, beautiful home. We use it as a guest house, but these are homes whereby we want the people of Yacht to come. But you're not coming here with your foolishness, with your own agenda or your own mandate. It will not happen here. We don't allow that. Well, look at the garden here, the fall garden. Have our herbs growing. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Let me show you some of the things you have growing. We have Brussels sprouts here, cabbages. Look at the broccoli. See how beautiful the broccoli is here? Broccoli. Let me show you some real broccoli. That's low stuff. Look at the broccoli here. You get some water on this too. Man. Look at the broccoli. Look how beautiful that is. Look at the head. See that? All of this? How sustainable that is. Very little space. And this is better than the broccoli. The leaf. Broccoli. Look at this broccoli. I must harvest. Look at the heads. Look at that. Healthy, green. You see how beautiful that is? Look at the broccoli. Beautiful broccoli. We have collards growing here. This is hot. 
Look at the beauty of the colors here. Tender and sweet. See that? Ah. Come on. We can eat all of this. Look. Broccoli, we got cabbages. The groin. We got green stuff. Look at all the green stuff we have. We got a variety of cabbages here. Bates. Georgian Southern. Look at that. Man. Look at the beauty of this kale. Hmm? Kale. Let me show you here. Look, we grow these for the animals. Look at these beautiful sugar beets. Look at that. This is edible. You eat this. Huh? Look at all this beautiful kale. Look at it. Look how large these sugar beets are. Look at that. Sweet and sugary. Well, here we have sugar beets, but we have turnips. Plenty. The greens. Look at those beautiful turnips. Is that beautiful they are? We can't eat it all, but we grow it. It will supply nutrients for the soil, but all kinds of greens. Okay. Kale. Pepper. Hmm. You can ask, ask for more. There are those that tell you to go buy enough food to last for a week. That's not enough food. We can't eat all of this. And then most of it is just right in the field. We will eat from this garden until the fall, till the spring of next year. And at that time, I'll show you the garden we will have started and what it's producing even in the midst of the springtime. We have our cattle, you can see them across through here, you can see, I don't know if we can get the picture. See our cattle over there? I hope we can, do you see them? We have cattle, we have, uh, we have beef cattle, and milk cattle, we have all that. We have all of our sheep, See the sheep there? We'll get a better picture of that. So this is, whoo, that's hot there. Look at the broccoli, look at this. This is just amazing. Now let me find a bigger one. And I'll break me a piece and tell you how delicious it is, how wonderful it tastes. Cabbages are coming along, they're slow. Let me see. Look at that spear. You get a package of spears like that in the market. Just this head alone in spears would cost you six, seven dollars. You don't have that much in this whole row with seeds. So, you can sustain if you learn how to care for each other. This can be a sustainable lifestyle. You learn how to care. Care for each other. Consider each other. I'll harvest all of this. As I said, the community is away so that the jobs do not cease because they are away. Our uh, Yaku from Florida, he caught about a three three pound bass out of here. Out of this pond. Stuffed with fish. Plenty of fish in there. We haven't had rain during the fall season. We had an abundance, overabundance in the summer. It was too much and everything has ceased. So we're very dry here. We're gonna have to drip this. That's why we put down what we call drip irrigation. 
We come out here, there's a pond there, there are pumps, and this line here, we drip, irrigate everything, so there, we fertilize, and we drip with organic fertilizer. And then we pick. This is a very nice setup. Very pungent and very hot, but it's very nice. How beautiful and healthy the sheep look. Matter of fact, I have a friend coming down this month. I told him we're gonna have a nice sheep for him. Nice lamb. I will cook that. Look how healthy they look. I will cook for my Achmikaya nice lambs and deer meat. We have a nice deer that at a Achyosipi uh, bag the other day, so. I'm going to do deer meat. I'm going to do deer meat and um, uh, some deer meat and um, lamb's meat. Put your nice little lamb and I'm going to put that on the grill. Now again, do you see all of this? All of this food substance here, all of this, we can't eat it all. So it doesn't take much space to grow an abundance of food. It just must be a will. As I said, I want to address how we keep our homes warm and what do we do. I'll show you this. And then we're going to close from there. But you need to sustain. All those areas must be covered. If you think you're going to build something like this and um, you're going to sustain it with finance, you're going to need a large amount of finance coming in. That's it. And people are selfish. They don't like to give. Here we give all. No one goes without. No one is liking. Let, let me show you up top. Come here. I want to show you. This is one of my favorite places because I like to run the steps. I like to do this about 50 times. I'll come out here and run the steps. But look at this panorama here. Look at this view. Just look at all the green stuff here. Look at all the green stuff. Look at all the edibles. Look at what we have to sustain ourselves. The greenhouses. Look at all the animal life we have, the husbands. It's here. Beautiful. Simple but beautiful. It doesn't possess the complexities of city life. This is one of our tabernacles. Small tabernacle. Oh, there are many that would love to have a tabernacle this size. Look how beautiful it is. Beautiful. Get a nice view of the whole community here. The wood come, came from the local lumber company. All of this. All the structure of this building came from we purchase material that the farmers tore down a building. We purchased that. And that's how we were able to construct this building. You see the mismatching of the tile. We just bought an expensive tile whereby we could get it for a little or nothing. And we just put it down. All the boards and all of that, that's where it came from. We look at it on this side. Now the swimming pool looks horrible because we don't have the men and women swimming. So when the daughters are swimming, we don't want men looking in, in there at them. We don't want to tempt them that way. But what a nice view here. Nice basketball court. The lights, as I said, play ball at night. Nice view of the community. Very nice. Very nice. All this green, sustainable substance. Look at all that beautiful kale. You tell me you're going to the grocery stores and, and get kale that beautiful? 
you go to place to places like Trader Joe's, some of the health food stores, three bunches of that kale will cost you two dollars, three dollars. There's not three dollars worth of seeds in all of that. In all of that kale, three dollars worth of seeds. You see how easy it is to grow? And look at all that beautiful green light. Look at the carrots. Look at the beets. Look at the kale. Look at all of the greenery there. Look, everything we need to sustain ourselves. Look at the garlic and, and, and the strawberries. There are those that will call or write me and say they're going to start this. Well, I'll leave that to them because this is a difficult work to start in this hour. If you got three or four, five or six people, five or six families that are genuine, you can make it work better that way than with 50 individuals. A hundred. Because you're going to get the diversity of opinion and you must have a man that is strong, that is not going to cow down. If they don't want to live here, let them go. But you cannot have a weak man doing this. Because the people will break his back. They will break his back. Simple tabernacle. You that will see this, many of you men, you will love to have a tabernacle this size, wouldn't you? It's beautiful. Very little money involved. It doesn't take much. Just take laborers, and those that are willing to work. You get five or six achim that are willing to work, you can do it. But they must be willing to work. Willing and ready. Sustainable community. Sustainable community. Everything's sustainable. So we have the tabernacle there. And look. As the old ones will say, you get your heart right up there. And come down here, and then you can't get your body right. Right here in the gym. Get your heart right up there and come down to the gym. And then you can get your body right. Put some of the big bags up. Then, give you the hammer a little bit. Be that some. That's not enough. Come here with the rope. And then you can work this. If that's not enough, my. You can lay down. That's a lot of weight. I haven't tried this. Let me see. Have a warm up in it. the gym and then you get your blood circulating. That was heavy. Don't try that. I'll get you not. That was heavy. I feel it. I haven't done that in a long time. Now there do that be those that are right men say, well you didn't do this right. My friend, I have been lifting weights over half of my life. You find those that will write and tell me that these big belly men looking like hogs, that's an abomination. How can a man that fat, that obese, instruct someone about discipline? He can't do it. I won't listen to him. I will not let a man that has no control over his eating habit to tell me the disciplines of Yah. No, he must get himself right first. And these are the beasts that want to have five, six wives. Big hogs of men, fat and overweight, grotesque, 
bellies. They can't even, you can't, they can't even stand up like this. Look down and see their feet. See their genetics, their parts. You know something is wrong when you can't do that. I worked on this playground during the summer for my babies. I built this new playground. This is part of our campground, if you want to call it. Our fruit trees, everything. A lot of work needs to be done. And during the winter, we'll go house from house, get everything beautiful. Fix every rotten board. You must do that. You must abstain. You have to. We have beautiful street lights all around. You come out, you want to jog, you want to exercise in the morning. The whole place is lit up. You want to come out and work out, it's easy to do here. You don't have to worry about no cars running you off the street. You don't have to worry about no pedophiles among you and raping your babies. Why is it that you that say you're Messianic Hebrews, you frankly don't give a damn about each other? And men are too cowardly to tell the people that this is the right way for Yah's people to live. You could amass a great amount of wealth. But they tell you don't trust nobody because they don't even trust themselves. I trust what Yah has put in me. Look at that ghost. Yep. <laughs> All right. Man. Come on. You want to eat some of that pepper? Yeah. Bad. A lot of these things are disarray right now on the labor, but the raised beds here. So we grow herbs and things like that. The winter is coming, but we'll get things beautified for the spring. And all during the winter, that's what we'll work on. Again, I said I want to address uh, how do we sustain the warmth of our homes and our families? How do we do that? That's important. People have such fears, you know. How am I going to stay warm or cool? Well, you turn a fan on to stay cool, but you must stay warm. And I want to show you what we do here how we do things. I will show you that. This is the entrance. You're exiting now the community. This is where we live. These are two of our homes here. You can see one is a guest house. We use it for a guest house when people visit, the brick one. And the other one is where our suction get a mean is. Simple little houses. They're not very expensive. We gave little for those homes. They're not of any value at all. We, nothing here is of any value in the sense monetarily. Because this place has not been built on money. It hasn't. It's been built upon the disciplines and the guidance of Yah. And you must have strong men to do this. You cannot have weak men. You cannot have little boys. You got to have strong men. And when everything else fails, you have what we call Chayil, able men. And they stand through all kinds of adversities. And they strengthen those that were drawn near unto them. So this is our community here. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of the way we live. We must sustain ourselves. And if we had communities like this all over the United States, can you imagine that one community from another, you got four or five here in South Carolina, you got them in Georgia, you got them North Carolina, you got them in Tennessee, and then you can grow certain things. And that should be sufficient for everyone to get what they need. And there should be more than enough. I think the goat has his head stuck. Come on a journey with me this way. We're going to be, we just harvest the sweet potatoes. Uh, a few little slips of steel here, you can see we harvest that. I'll be out here tomorrow cleaning the garden up. Take everything up, get the plastic up, and get everything ready for the, sp for the spring garden. We'll put peas and everything out here. I gotta get the drip up and all this I got to get up. 
but I get all this fencing and all this where we grew beans and things that all this I'll have to get up on tomorrow it's a lot of work one of the last things we're going to harvest is the sugar cane here and we'll take some of the heads and press them for, for flour the sugar cane head this will make uh, I don't know if they're dried yet enough big pancake syrup I mean pancake but the but the cane sustainable now Um, I love chewing on this. Mmm, <laughs> it's so sweet. Mmm, -hmm. come on your journey with me. Mm. That's sweet. I'll tell you if you can get the husk down, that will be a nice cleanser, colon cleanser. This is rough it here. Give me the sugar. Mm. Sweet. We had such severe weather this year, rain, things like the gorge and all of that. It really didn't make it, but we'll rebound from next year, from this year, and continue next year. This is sweet. Press the sugar cane, we'll let you see. We're gonna press cane, we're gonna harvest that. I'll get out there and harvest that. The community will not be back until, well, we won't get any work done this week because when they get back probably Thursday morning, tired. So very little will be accomplished this week, but next week we'll hit it. But this is sweet. This is part of our community as well. Teshua too. This is how we sustain ourselves. This is part of it. Because if you got 15, 20 people on a piece of land and the people are complaining about it's too cold and all of that, you got electric heat or gas you get that electric bill and it's six thousand five hundred dollars <laughs> how do you pay that how do you pay sixty seventy seventy five thousand dollars a year in electricity it's impossible and then people began to murmur and complain it's impossible so all of our homes heat by this main source wood how do we get enough wood? Well, there is a business in the state of North Carolina that we trade off fruit and vegetables, the barter system. During the summer, we supply them with everything we can. Watermelons, and cantaloupes, and cabbages, and broccoli. I make sure this month, because they celebrate the pagan holiday, I will not, to make sure they have plenty of collards and turnips all of that beets and the broccoli so we trade them off wood and we trade them off vegetables and things like that for what we call squares this wood here we haul them during the winter see these bins here here's about the large Them. And we fill these bins. Yah has blessed us through our oxymion to purchase these bins here. Sometimes as little as $7.50 each. And we get these for $10. And we fill these with wood squares. We load them on a trailer and we go to each house and set off a bin of these. And this is what we burn, this wood here. And for our large boilers, we burn stuff like this. But we'll cut, we'll cut this up, 
We'll utilize this for our home. We have a compost pile over there whereby the the uh, <clears throat> the mulch from the cutting of trees, we utilize that in the garden and everything. So everything is sustained, everything sustains us. And everything here is recycled. We throw nothing away, nothing. We'll find some use for it sometime down the road. Believe me, you will find use for it. So we have all these bins. These bins are full. We'll take them to the homes. This will sustain a home. And one bin depends on how the home is burning at. That will last at least 7, 10, 12 days. The large bins like these. Now for someone like me, it lasts longer than that. I'm not one that loves a lot of heat in the house. But one like this will last. And then we'll push all the sawdust and pile to make a mulch pile, and that's how we do it. And then began again. So it's always a constant effort. You have to do that. Well, does Yah want his people to learn how to live with each other so that they can help sustain each other through the times that we are headed towards? Sure he does. Well, you're going to have those dissenters that will say, well, we all must go back to the land of Yisra'ya. My friend, don't listen to these individuals. They have no effort. They have no resources to even help you. It's not cheap in that land. It's not cheap in that land. That's why Yah is going to have to do it. It's not cheap there. And if 10 million people went to that land next week, how does the land sustain them? If there is a massive triculation to that land, there's not even enough land to produce enough food to sustain the people. That's why we must understand that the true land of Yisra'ya is from the Nile to the great Euphrates. Let no one kid you. And so we're going to sustain ourselves here in this land where Yah has commanded us. It's by His ordination that we're here, all of us. In every land where there are the people of Yah, then you come together and live with each other like the Shulishim did, the first apostles. The people sold they had, they brought to the apostles' feet, and that was distribution made that no man had any need. And that's what it must be done. That's how you sustain. You're not going to sustain the way you're living. Your little money is not going to do it. You're broke, you're busted, you're disgusted. There's not even enough money to maintain, is it? Sure it isn't. Gas, three or four cars, just even the insurance. I do know. And so this is what this community is all about. Hopefully the next time I can give you a more fresher concept of what we're about, what we're doing here, and you can see the liveliness of the community. You'll see it transformed during the course of the winter. Uh, what we will be doing and how we will be doing this. So I hope you enjoy this video. Hope it bless you and enrich your heart. Uh, we welcome all Yah's people to come visit. It's one thing we will do, we will feed you. You will eat richly and abundantly. But do not come expecting us to handle your financial situation or circumstances whereby you come to visit and we just accommodate you. We don't do that to everyone. You're welcome to come. You're welcome to come for a visit. You're welcome to come for a tour. We will take you through. We have individuals that will do that. And then you don't have to walk like me. We'll put you on one of our golf carts and drive you around. All right, my friends, until you hear from us again, and you do all the time, by the way, of preaching, may the riches of God rest upon you all in your shoes. Shalom, shalom.